The Baltimore Ravens face off against the Cleveland Browns in week eight. We get into a full game preview, final game predictions, and so much more coming up next on this game day edition of Locked on Ravens. You are Locked on Ravens, your daily Baltimore Ravens podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another edition of Locked On Ravens, your daily Baltimore Ravens podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Ostriker of Ravens Wire, here with you on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much for being here today, making Locked On Ravens both a part of your day and your first listen each and every single day. We're free and available for you on all podcasting platforms. That includes in video form on YouTube, where you can like and subscribe to the channel. Also in audio form, where you can follow along and subscribe over there as well. For five days a week, Daily Ravens coverage, same show, both audio and video. are not missing out any which way you decide to watch or listen to the show here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's game day edition of Locked On Ravens is brought to you by Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash Locked On NFL. Use code lowercase Locked On NFL to win $50 instantly when you play $5. The 5 and 2 Ravens head to Cleveland to play the 1 and 6 Browns in an AFC North matchup. Man, you, just, you can't lose this game for the Ravens. There are ways that they could, but if this team is serious now, you can't fall into that proverbial trap game. You know, Cleveland, they lose their starting quarterback, although, you know, arguably it was honestly better for Baltimore to face their starting quarterback considering how bad Deshaun Watson has been. But this is a team that the offense has been, Baltimore's offense has been just dominant. The defense certainly has some work to do, and we'll talk about some of the players they will be without in this game. But this is a team that needs to get a win here, if only to show that, you know, this is a team that can put away bad teams early. I would love to see a dominant effort from this team in week eight. So in the first part of the show, we'll talk about the Ravens offense going up against the Browns defense. Then we'll flip the script, talk about the Browns offense going up against the Ravens defense. Then finally, we'll get into some key players to watch, storylines, final predictions, and a lot more along those lines. So Let's start off with Baltimore's offense, number one offense in the league, putting up historic numbers right now at a historic pace. I mean, this is the number one rushing offense in the league by such a wide margin. It's honestly kind of it's funny, but it's not funny at the same time. It's like, wow, this is a this is unreal. 6.2 yards per carry. Obviously, the dominance of Derrick Henry, the threat of Lamar Jackson with his legs, got guys like Justice Hill coming and being a complimentary piece. They've been incredible. Then through the air, they are number one in net yards per attempt as well with 8.4. So they'll beat you on the ground. They'll beat you through the air. This is a team, and I love the term that they've kind of coined here, pick your poison offense. Now, Cleveland, they've been known for their defense in recent seasons, obviously led by guys like Miles Garrett, Denzel Ward, etc. It's kind of been a down year from Cleveland defense standards. Not that they're a bad defensive unit, but it's not that like top five vaunted defense, at least not with the stats show here. And honestly, you watch and you kind of see it, it's just it's not the same right now. Cleveland defensively 11th in rushing defense, and they are 19th in pass defense. They have guys who are balling out. Denzel Ward is playing awesome cornerback right now. Miles Garrett is Miles Garrett. You have Jeremiah Wusu Kormoa kind of doing his thing as well. But other than that. You know, they, 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 they've needed other people to step up, and it really hasn't worked out that way. I mean, again, guys like Miles Garrett are kind of carrying the load here. You know, you have Zadarius Smith, who has four sacks on the year as well. He and Miles Garrett actually tied for the team lead in sacks. And if you missed our bonus episode yesterday with uh, some realistic and dream trade targets for the Ravens, I mentioned Zadarius Smith as a guy that they could go after. Miles Garrett I mentioned as well, but obviously that is a dream, pretty unrealistic expectation for that. But hey, maybe this is an audition of sorts for a guy like Sedarius Smith. So the Baltimore offensive line, certainly going to have their hands full, but I feel like for the Ravens, it, it's honestly pretty, it's it's a decently good matchup because here's what the the MO, and especially I think this, 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 I guess, narrative was kind of built with Cleveland in a way, but Cleveland brought in defenders to stop Lamar Jackson. You know, you like you play Lamar Jackson twice a year. Yeah, you're going to bring in guys that maybe fit that profile and that mold a little bit more. JOK being the the really embodiment of that. He was mocked to the Ravens in a ton of mock drafts. The Browns get him in the second round. He's a heck of a player. But that's like that sideline to sideline speed linebacker, really speedy guy, right? Can go and get and get Lamar, and it really hasn't worked out. Like Lamar still torches Cleveland. 
But now you have Derrick Henry in that backfield. And JOK versus Derrick Henry, give me JOK getting down 10 times out of 10. Derrick Henry just bowling that guy over. Derrick Henry wins that battle 10 times out of 10. So JOK, I'm saying he's going down 10 times out of 10 in that matchup, in my opinion. So to me, it's like, all right, Grant Delpit, who had he, he was strong early. He's kind of fallen off as of late. I know Browns fans have kind of wanted a little more from him. Greg Newsom has been a guy that you can target. It seems like, you know, especially with this Baltimore pass offense, if you get a guy, Zay Flowers, expected to play in this game at the time of this recording, that's the latest update we have on him. So I'd assume he'll be active for this game. But Zay one-on-one, Rashad Bateman one-on-one with a guy like Greg Newsom. We'll see how that unfolds. I would also love to see Mark Andrews. Mark Andrews loves playing against Cleveland. Loves it. And we could see another big Mark Andrews day in this game. I would love it. And if you listen to our Friday episode of the show, I, I had a bold prediction, and we'll get to that in the final part of the show. So you will not want to miss out on the bold prediction. It's on the offensive side of the ball. That's why I bring it up here. But to me, I feel like with Baltimore, they just have to get down into Cleveland's red area. And that, that, that's where I think you have to capitalize if you're this Ravens offense. And by that, I mean get out to an early lead. That's going to be one of the keys of the game. We'll get into more detail on that coming up. But don't let this Browns team get momentum. And how you do that is you start fast and you start early. And you kind of just, you know, hammer it down early on Cleveland. You you look at some of these other – Cleveland's not a high turnover team. They're they're last – or not last. They're third to last in interceptions with – only one on the year. They only have one interception this season. So they're not a high turnover team along those lines. Now Cleveland is limiting drive times. They're second in the league in terms of total time. Teams are only running about five plays against them per drive, not giving up a ton of yards per drive. So to me, make Cleveland uncomfortable, right? Go, go out there. And Todd Munkin, he has those drives in his offense where they will go six plays, 80 yards, touchdown in like three minutes and two seconds. And like, I love those drives, but I think a statement would be like opening drive, go down like 10 plays, 80 yards, just like pounding the ball with the run game, some play action over top. That's how you set a tone. And I think for Baltimore, they could certainly do that. So maybe some unheralded guys like an Isaiah Likely, Nelson Aguilar, Tylen Wallace, Justice Hill has been awesome for them. Get some of those guys involved. Because I think for this Cleveland team, they have star power on defense, but it's just not the same group as I've mentioned. So I think there's just better exploits that you can have against the defense like that, especially you're not going to necessarily stop Miles Garrett. We've seen Baltimore do it before with guys like Aaron Donald and a couple other like star all time great defenders. So there's a chance it happens, but I wouldn't I wouldn't put money if I'm on found not put money on that. So I would say if you can neutralize Miles Garrett as best you can. If Denzel Ward eliminates somebody in the wide receiver room, then you say, okay, well, look, the Ravens have all these these other options. And that is the beauty of what this offense is this season. So play action is going to be very strong. It's just the allure and the gravity that play action has, I think is going to be incredible for this team in week eight against Cleveland. But the defense for the Ravens also has a job to do. Coming up the second part of the show, we will talk about how the Baltimore defense matches up with a very unknown right now in the Cleveland offense. Somebody should have stayed tuned playing to get to on the show. First, the show is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the best place to get real money sports action. With over 10 million members and billions of dollars in award winnings, Prize Picks has made daily fantasy sports accessible to all. You just pick more or less on at least two players for a shot to up to 100 times your cash earn your game all season long on Prize Picks. I love going on Prize Picks, seeing everything they have to offer, and they really have a bunch of new stuff that they put out, and it's really cool to go on there and see everything. You can now up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks as little as four correct picks. Prize Picks also offers weekly promotions that can lead to big payouts like Taco Tuesday. Each Tuesday, Prize Picks discounts like pair projections up to 25% to provide even more value for your lineups. Prize picks is the best way to win real money this football season. Most players are going off. Which ones aren't? Make your picks in less than 60 seconds to turn your sports opinions into real money all season long on prize picks. So for this Ravens and Browns game, if you like more on Lamar Jackson passing yards, 
more on Derrick Henry rushing yards. Those could be good options for you over on Prize Picks. Download the app today. Use code Locked On NFL to get fifty dollars into the app to play your first five dollar lineup. Again, download the app today. Use code Locked On NFL to get fifty dollars into the app to play your first five dollar lineup. Prize Picks run your game. And this show was brought to you by Pre Alcohol by Zbiotics. Pre Alcohol Probiotic Drink by Zbiotics is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. Here's how it works. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. It's this byproduct, not dehydration, that's to blame for your rough next day. Pre-alcohol produces an enzyme to break this byproduct down. Just remember to make Z-Biotics your first drink of the night. Drink responsibly and you'll feel your best tomorrow. Here's how to use it. Step one, drink pre-alcohol for best results. Make pre-alcohol your first drink of the night. Step two, drink responsibly. Pace yourself, hydrate, and get a good night's sleep. Step three, enjoy tomorrow. Wake up feeling refreshed and ready to take on the day. Go to zbiotics.com slash lockdown NFL to learn more and get 15% off of your first order when you use Locked On NFL at checkout. Zbiotix is back to the 100% money back guarantee. So if you're unsatisfied for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Remember to head to zbiotix.com slash Locked On NFL and use the code Locked On NFL at checkout for 15% off. We are back for our second segment, Locked On Ravens. Kevin Allstriker still here with you on a game day edition of the show. Thank you for tuning into Locked On Ravens today and making us your first listen of the day and a part of your day in general. Be sure to subscribe in video form, like the video. Also, subscribe and follow along in audio form as well. We're building up such great communities here. Video form, audio form, social media, subtext. We're almost to 9,000 subscribers in video form. So the goal is obviously next 9,000, then we'll go 10,000. We'll just keep on growing in audio form. That show and that community is growing each and every single day, that platform, because it's the same show, both audio and video. And again, we do these game day episodes for every Sunday game. And, you know, our game day episodes for Thursday night games, Monday night games, obviously that comes with the territory of it just being a regular episode during our regular five-day week scheduled programming. But maybe you're on the way to a friend's house to watch the game. Maybe you're setting out a spread for the game, listening to this, watching this. It's a new thing we're doing this season. So really appreciate everybody for all the support there as well. Let's dive into Baltimore's defense versus Cleveland's offense. Look, this is step up time for this defense. Now, I know that there are some guys that are probably not or already not going to play in this game. At the time of this recording, Nate Wiggins, there was this initial, not not confusion, but there was just a lot going on with Nate Wiggins and his status on Saturday. So essentially, the Ravens made a flurry of moves. On Saturday, they activated Jalen Armour Davis from injured reserve. They elevated Bump Cooper from the practice squad, and they placed TJ Tampa on injured reserve. And then they put a little caveat at the bottom of their announcement that said Nate Wiggins is not traveling with the team to Cleveland, but his playing status for Sunday remains questionable. And then, so that was about like two 30 yesterday. And then about four ish, three ish hours later, they ended up downgrading him to out. And that is on top of you have Keaton Mitchell, who obviously was designated to return. He's not going to play in this game, but the big one defensively, obviously Marlon Humphrey, who is doubtful. He did not practice all week with the knee injury. So that's big. I mean, no Marlon Humphrey, no Nate Wiggins. Now, if there was a week to lose those guys, you would probably argue it is this one because Amari Cooper no longer in Cleveland. He's now in Buffalo. So what you're working with on the Cleveland side of things in terms of pass catchers, Jerry Judy is going to be their top guy there. So that's what you're working with. And then they have Cedric Tillman, who had a breakout game last week. That could be an option that gets a lot more playing time this time around. Elijah Moore, who's a vet. And then obviously you got to worry about David Njoku in that tight end spot. And the Ravens have had some trouble against tight ends this season. So Njoku's a guy that even gave them trouble last year. The Ravens have historically, especially over these last couple of seasons, and maybe you know however far you want to go back, they've had trouble covering tight ends. And it does not help the Roquan, and that was one of Roquan's specialties. Roquan has not had the year many have anticipated. That's been a contribution to that. You have other guys. It's not all Roquan's fault. Don't take it that way, but it's a combination. So the big thing is obviously Deshaun Watson out, Jameis Winston in. Jameis is a wild card. He's a high mistake player, high turnover guy. It, it, It points and spurts, but he can also be a guy that the Browns can galvanize around, right? They did it last year with Joe Flacco. They're two different players, obviously, but. I think, and I'm honestly in this category too, I was a lot less nervous about this game with Deshaun Watson. Not that I'm nervous about it now, but I'm just saying there were a lot, there was a lot less like, oh, what could happen here? Because with Jameis, it's like, 
I, who knows what's going to happen. And obviously they have a new play caller now, different guys call them plays. So it's like, okay, this is a new thing. This could either be a disaster for Cleveland or it could be just what they needed. And they're going to, you know, rally around. You got Nick Chubb who's going to play in his second game since that brutal knee injury last season. It's just like, man, all that is going for them. But I just, I don't feel like that's going to be enough. This is the worst passing offense in the league. And obviously we can take that with a grain of salt because Deshaun Watson was the one leading that passing attack. And it just knew that every single week it was going to be a disaster. And so I think that's why all of Baltimore pretty much wanted to see Deshaun Watson over anybody else. But again, yeah, this is the worst passing offense in the entire league. 32nd, just 3.9 yards per attempt. That's it. 3.9. Rushing wise, they're not much better. They're 20th. But again, that was with Nick Chubb not really being there. It was guys like Jerome Ford, Dante Foreman, who was running that. So it's again, like it's, it's a technically different Browns team. Now their offensive line, Cleveland's offensive line has been ravaged by injury. And they just really haven't been good this season. This is why I'm saying it's step up time for this defense. Like it, it has to be because look, let's be honest. I, if you've been listening to me on Lockdown Ravens, especially recently, I've been making it a big point to go over the offenses and quarterbacks they've played over the first seven weeks of the season. Guys like Pastor Mahomes, Dak Prescott, Josh Allen, Joe Burrow, Jaden Daniels, you know, Baker Mayfield, future Hall of Famers, and guys who are in the MVP conversation with Lamar Jackson. They have an opportunity now to play Jameis Winston, then a Bo Nix, then Joe Burrow, who is, you know, Joe Burrow's playing well. And then you have whoever between Russell Wilson and Justin Fields. That is your next month of the season. Three out of four quarterbacks, you should absolutely dominate. And so with the defense, you could say, okay, Zach Orr, right? A little bit of an adjustment period with him and it being, you know, his first time calling plays and you got to go through that grace period a little bit. There is no excuse now. Like from here on out, like you could say, okay, first seven weeks, that's a gauntlet. Still not really like an excuse. Like you got to get it together. It's been almost two months of the season at this point. But if you can't get it done, you know, if you let Jameis Winston throw for 300 and three touchdowns on you, that's an issue. Whether it be personnel, whether it be play calling, whatever it is, maybe we're just not looking at the best Ravens defense. And I, I, I don't think we're looking at the defense we saw last season. I, I projected that step back and, you know, here we are. But it's, it's tough because their run defense, for the most part, has been so dominant this season, but the pass defense has been so bad. And so you're going to be relying on Brandon Stevens, Jalen Armour Davis, Arthur Millette, Bump Cooper. You know, that is what it's going to be in that corner room. You have some other guys you can sprinkle in as well. Obviously, our Darius Washington can play for you in the slot if you need. So it, it's step-up time. But again, if, if there was a week to lose it, lose them, it, it would be this one for Marlon and Nate. So hopefully those guys will be able to, to get back next week. But what my point is, a very long and windy road to get back to the pass rush. I just wanted to make the point about the secondary because it's important. But back to the pass rush, I mean, the Browns' offensive line is pretty bad. And after th they've had some strong moments this season, it's just been too inconsistent. And they're not consistently getting pressure with four, and they need to. They need to. And against the Cleveland offensive line, they absolutely have to. Because if you don't, like, what else are you going to do? Like, this Cleveland offensive line, you need to have guys that can step up. Wyatt Teller is back now for them. Judrick Wills is out. So, again, it's just like guy after guy after guy coming through, coming through, coming through. There's not been any, any continuity there. I want to see something from Adafi Owe, you know, from David Ajabo. Let's get a Yannick Ngakwe sack in there. Kyle Van Noy, right? Let's see some of this. Because we can be honest, in that Tampa game, the pass rush was not great, and their sacks came pretty much in garbage time. So they have to be better there. But with the way Baltimore's defense is playing right now, you know, th there's not a lot of confidence anywhere. And if they don't have a dominant game, like if the Ravens win this game, well, let's just say 28 to 21. Let's just say that, right? And Jameis Winston goes to 303 touchdowns, the Browns, you know, they can't really run the ball, but the pass offense is this, that, and the other. You know, we can make an argument about game script. We can make an argument about teams are throwing the ball on the Ravens because they're up by a lot, a lot of the time, and they have to abandon the run. But that's why I judge based off of net yards per attempt, because net yards per attempt does not judge based off of how many times the ball is thrown or ran against you. It is judging what you do in those opportunities. And so for the Ravens, they are the 28th ranked defense passing wise in terms of net yards per attempt. 
So, yes, yards, they're dead last. 32nd, dead last. But net yards per attempt, they are both having yards thrown on them, and they are not doing well in their opportunities. It has to get better. And, look, coaching, players, all of it. Marcus Williams, like, I know that's the guy everybody's talking about right now, and rightfully so. You have to be able to have this defense go hand-in-hand with each other. It feels like one group is doing well at one point, then another group does well at another point, and it's just too inconsistent like that. So, look, the defense I don't think has been as bad as the stats say, but we can't sit here and say they've been playing well, especially in the secondary. I mean, we all have eyes, don't we? Like, they're, they're not playing well. So they have to get that together. We come up with the final part of the show. We'll talk about final predictions. We got storylines, players to watch, a bold prediction, and so much more. Stay tuned. A lot to get to on the show. First, the show is brought to you by FanDuel. Hey, NFL fans, you can start the season with a bigger turn on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So to get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats. If you like play-by-play and so much more on the same page where you place your bets, you're started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. So for this Ravens and Browns game, Ravens open up as nine and a half point favorites. So if you like the road favorite in the Ravens or the home underdog in the Browns, be sure to pick your side over on FanDuel. Just visit FanDuel.com. That's FanDuel.com. We're back. Our final segment of Locked On Ravens. Kevin Allstriker here with you on this game day. Week 8 Ravens-Browns here coming at 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. Five days a week here on Locked On Ravens. Of course, thank you to all the supporters out there. We are growing at a rapid pace. It's been an awesome season and, of course, an awesome turnaround by this Ravens team. We give you five days a week plus more of Daily Ravens coverage. So if you have a friend or a family member who wants Daily Ravens coverage, be sure to send them our way. And if you are interested in Daily Ravens coverage yourself, be sure to keep it locked on here on Locked On Ravens of the everydayers who listen every single day. Thank you for tuning in. If you're new to the channel, new to the show, welcome in. If you're somewhere in the middle, welcome on back. We're going to be live after the Ravens and Browns game. So anywhere from 5, 10, 15, even maybe 20 minutes after, after the game ends, we will be live here breaking down everything. Win, lose, hopefully not tie. I despise ties. But we'll be breaking down everything. So let's dive into some predictions, storylines, players to watch, and a lot more now. I mean, look, Lamar Jackson, he is absolutely doing his thing right now. And to me, when you look at this offense, who is going to stop it? What is going to stop it? Teams are going to have to try to figure that problem out for the entire year. And man, I just, uh, it's, it's been awesome to watch. So when you talk about players to watch, and we'll just get right off, right to the bull prediction straight off the bat here. Patrick Ricard is one of my players to watch. Not because of, oh, he's going to go off and have this massive day, but I my bold prediction is Patrick Ricard scores a touchdown today. My bold prediction is Patrick Ricard scores a touchdown. So I'm going with big Pat Ricard with that. But also, look, the Ravens have used him in so many unique ways, not only over the course of his career, but over the course of this season. And I'm really intrigued to see what they do with him, especially if they can get out to an early lead, kind of what those heavy personnel packages look like. We saw him run a route. In that game against Tampa, ended up dropping the pass. But, hey, you know what? I'm, I'm feeling it this week. So, Ricard's one of my guys to watch in this one. Namdi Matibike is another one. Again, we talked about that Ravens pass rush in the second part of the show, and we can loop in it up a way in this conversation as well as my final player to watch. I just think for this pass rush, consistency is key. And, you know, we'll see it in spurts from them, but it's not as consistent as I personally would like, and I'm sure – the team also would like it to be more consistent as well. So for those two guys, it's not only on them, obviously, right? The entire unit, the entire group has to be better. But those are guys I'm looking out for in this game. And so, I mean, that's the really important part, right? And I know John Harbaugh has kind of talked about this, is the pass rush in the secondary, they're married, right? They're married. And, you know, what we're seeing right now is they're split up. Like, they're not working together. They're not working in tandem because, obviously, covered sacks are a thing. And hard wins at the line and sacks that way are a thing as well. So you got to be able to marry those two things together. Now, in terms of my keys to victory here, first of all, don't give Jameis Winston any confidence. Don't give him anything. You know, Jameis is a guy, he can be a microwave player, right? You know, in the NBA, basketball, you got those microwave scorers. They see one go in and they just can't miss. Jameis can be that player. Jameis can be that guy. So if he sees something, if he if a th- he hits on a throw or he throws a touchdown early, he might take that 
and run with it for the rest of the game. So don't give Jameis any momentum or some turnovers. I'd love to see two plus interceptions today, even from a secondary that probably will not have Marlon Humphrey and will not have Nate Wiggins. I'd love to see it. Next kind of goes hand in hand, secondary bounce back. I mean, if not now, when Jerry Judy is a, is a wide receiver one, you got improving guys like Cedric Tillman, you know, Jamari Thrash, Elijah Moore hasn't really been anything since he's been to Cleveland. You, you have to be able to have a good game secondary wise or else when is it going to happen? When is it going to come? And I get it. You know, Marlon being down as big Wiggins being down as big, but Again, the Browns don't have anybody here, right? David Njoku is a good player. Jerry Judy can do some stuff. But those are your top two options. I would love to see the secondary get right on Sunday here. And then finally, no trap. Don't fall for the trap. I know that's the word, the phrase everybody is using, trap game. You saw it earlier in the season with the Las Vegas Raiders. Hopefully Baltimore has learned from that. They have to show up, play a full 60 minutes, Put on the gas offensively and defensively. That or that's just some of the things that this defense and the team in general has to do in order to win this game. They need to. They absolutely need to. Because look, a loss here doesn't end your season. But this is the worst type of loss you can take. Because I have my three tiers of losses. Divisional losses are the worst losses because it impacts one your division record and two your AFC record, and that has impact on playoffs. Two, it's the conference losses, right? That is the second worst because it just impacts your AFC record. And finally, NFC losses are the least consequential. But Lamar Jackson doesn't like losing on the NFC and just doesn't lose the NFC, so that that's not really a point that we have to make. So, I look for my final score prediction. I'm going Baltimore 33, Cleveland 16. I think Baltimore puts up another 30-plus performance against a really good Browns defense. Again, wouldn't be shocked if Baltimore gets held to a little bit less than that. But, look, I'm going to give this offense a benefit of the doubt. They've been playing absolutely lights out, and I'm not going to bet against them here. So going 33 for Baltimore, then for Cleveland, I think Jameis Winston could definitely inject some life into this offense. But, it, I don't think it's going to inject much. And I think that we're going to see some level of a bounce back performance from this Ravens team. So big game on the docket in week eight for the Baltimore Ravens looking to move to six and two and have a six game win streak. That's all I have for you here today on Locked on Ravens, though. Thank you so much for tuning in to this game day episode coming up later today. We'll, of course, be back after the game. Instant reaction live, breaking everything down from the Ravens and Browns matchup. So be sure to stay tuned for that. And we'll see you right back here soon on Locked on Ravens.